Hello and thank you for tuning in. Today we are going to be discussing the spotted lanternfly, an emerging pest of grapes that unfortunately is on its way towards North Carolina. The spotted lanternfly is native to China and has become invasive in Korea and the US. It was first detected in eastern Pennsylvania in 2014 and has already spread to nine states. Counties with confirmed breeding populations are shown in darker blue on this map. While we haven't found an established population in North Carolina yet, we have intercepted dead adults on materials coming from infested areas. Unfortunately, it may only be a matter of time before this pest is here. This is because SLF is an excellent hitchhiker. It can lay its eggs on any flat surface, so it can literally be on the next train, car, RV, or tarp out of the infested area. Several infested states have enacted quarantines and mover guides to slow down the threat. On top of this, it has gotten help from another invasive species to establish quickly. Ailanthus altissima, or Tree of Heaven, has a similar native range to spotted lanternfly and is invasive in the eastern U.S., particularly along tree lines and roadsides. It has a cantaloupe-like bark and smells like rancid or burning peanut butter, which comes from a compound it pumps into the soil to suppress the growth of other plants. While this host is a favorite, SLF aren't picky and will feed on just about anything with smooth bark. Unfortunately, that includes grapes, which is the only ag commodity affected by this pest so far. This insect damages the vines by feeding on sap with their piercing sucking mouth parts. The honeydew they excrete through feeding can also cause city mold to grow on the leaves and fruit. Early research suggests that heavy feeding, especially over several years, can severely weaken vines. Early numbers from Penn State Extension show that a majority of grape growers in the infested area have had to deal with this pest, with damage ranging from reduced sugar set to vine death as heavy feeding can reduce vine tolerance to freezing events. And staying ahead of this damage has proven to be very expensive, approximately tripling the number of sprays and insecticide costs per acre in Pennsylvania. These costs are driven mostly by host preference during the spotted lanternfly life cycle. From a catch through their final immature stage, SLF nymphs can only hop or crawl and can feed on several hosts, tree of heaven shown here. However, adults SLF exhibit a mating flight or swarm that coincides roughly with the month preceding grape harvest in Pennsylvania. So you can have heavy swarms and feeding during a time where your spray options are more limited, and you can have a situation like the one shown above with SLF littering the floor of the vineyard as often as once a week. Years of heavy feeding, especially if going unchecked, can lead to scenes like this. The good news is there are things that you can do to keep this from happening to your vineyard. First, if you see something you suspect might be SLF, take a picture and send it to badbug at ncagr.gov and keep the specimen in the freezer until we get back to you with an identification. Second, we are conducting an early detection survey this growing season using circle traps like the one shown here. Third, we are creating vineyard preparedness kits with more information on spotted lanternfly management. Please place an order with us today if you would like one to be delivered to you. Thank you all for tuning in. We look forward to your partnership when it comes time to battle this bug.